So the last thing that I want to, or the last skill that I want to go over with you in the quantitative risk assessment is the use of simulation. And by simulation, it's almost, you know, we're probably talking about a Monte Carlo simulation, which is a, a brute force uh, travel through the various uh, probability uh, nexuses of, of a project and their individual probabilities and their individual impacts to give you an overall risk assessment, whether it's on a particular branch of a project or the project as a whole. So this is uh, really useful to us when we want to see how these uh, risks uh, aggregate up uh, through the project or, or like I say, within individual branches. So we can use them in support of decision trees uh, to get a better uh, understanding of what the overall values are, the overall probabilities, and, uh, you know, particularly where those are complicated. We looked at a couple simple examples, but they can get much more complicated. And so simulation would be completely appropriate to flush those out and make them uh, more robust. Uh, but it's also used ex extensively with critical path method, which uh, I know, again, we, we haven't talked about yet. We're coming up on it next week. Uh, where we'll be talking about scheduling and critical path method. But, you know, you can appreciate that when we start looking at the probabilities of delays within the project and individual tasks and work packages, and we're trying to assess the overall likelihood of delays of either branches of the project or the project as a whole, uh, it really benefits from the use of simulation in order to assess all of that and, and is almost essential uh, to identify path convergence, which I'll talk about in, in just a sec. I'll, I'll throw up a really simple issue and we can uh, uh, look at it. So here we have our example of path convergence, uh, where we're going to, you know, flow through an axis and basically what we have are three parallel activities, so they can all be happening concurrently but they're all on the critical path. So we're concerned about delays in each and every one of them. So, you know, and I've set it up or shown it uh, using a PERT3 uh, parameter assessment of the activity time uh, that we're going to do to get it. But for simplicity purposes, let's assume for a second that you know, it's a straight up normal distribution. We're on the mean for our estimate and that there's a 50% likelihood that we're going to finish early and there's a 50% chance that we're going to finish late in each activity. So what is the probability that the next milestone, milestone B, is going to be delayed? And this is where path convergence comes in. So we could look simply and just assume we have a single critical path and that means there's a 50% chance uh, that activity one will be delayed, in which case there would be a 50% chance that milestone B would be delayed. But that's too simple. It doesn't account for the probabilities that activity two might be delayed and activity three might be delayed. And if any one of them are delayed, our milestone at B is going to be delayed. So, you know, think of it this way. So what's the chance that all three of these are going to be delayed? And if we figure out what all of the outcomes are, so uh, there's really eight possible outcomes between activities one, two, and three. Uh, one of those outcomes is that uh, all three of them finish on time. One of the outcomes is that they all finish late. And, and then the other six outcomes are some variation thereof where one or two of them are on time or late and the other one is uh, uh, the opposite. And because of that, there, there is a one in eight chance that uh, all of them are going to be late, or 12.5%. So the corollary is also true that that means that there's an 87.5% chance that one or more will be late, because seven out of the eight uh, outcomes have one or more of them being late. And so that represents 87.5%. And so it is almost inevitable in this case, because of this convergence, that our milestone at B is going to be late. And simulation is in a complex situation, this is a very simple situation, simulation is the path by which we can really look at that and not just the probability, but also the quantity that it is likely to be late. 
So Monte Carlo simulation, so how does it work? It basically simulates the life history of the project or a part of a project. And our input, we start, we have our probability input. So what is the probability that something is going to be late? And then we have a random number generator, which is going to decide where we are in that probability curve. And the probabilistic output then is the, the whole project cost or time frequency distribution. So we're, we're going to be able to aggregate this by basically brute force going through this calculation and doing it thousands of times. So obviously this is a computer model to go through it and to build up a single probability distribution for the overall project time. So if we think of it this way, so here is a schedule or a, a node diagram, network diagram for one of our projects, which I think I use as an example in the scheduling when it comes up. And if we consider the activity time in each of those activities as a distribution, as a prob probability distribution. So if we're running a simulation and we go down the path and we're going to go down every path in every pass, and we say, ooh, you know, random number generated, that will determine how long that activity actually took in accordance with its probability distribution. And then same thing, go on to the next one, random number. This is how long it ended up taking. And so one pass through the entire project and we get one value for how long the project took. And then you do that thousands and thousands of times and you build up this probability distribution for the project as a whole and you can figure out what the probability is that you're going to uh, you know be on time or within what range of uh, you know schedule you're going to be so let's uh, have a look at it uh, you know i say demonstrated but really it's qualitatively walking through it uh, so we're going to set this up so we have three tasks and they're all linear tasks uh, so you have task A, task B, task C, they all happen successively. And we have done our PERT uh, evaluation uh, for the project time or, the, or the, the time assessment. And so we've come up with an optimistic, a most likely and a pessimistic. And we've put them into the calculator, uh, weighting the, the most likely uh, and come up with our estimate. Now, the nice thing about PERT, of course, is it follows uh, a beta distribution, which means that we actually, with the definition and the standard deviation, we now have a probability distribution for the actual activity time for that activity. And that can be input into our Monte Carlo situation. So in this case, we add up all of the time estimates uh, for everything on the critical path. In this case, they're all on the critical path and we get to 17 and a half hours or days. It doesn't really say. So what is the expected duration of the project? Well, on its face, we would expect it to be 17.5 days. And so the expected duration of the project is the sum. And that's where we go. Oh, now we know it's months. We didn't say it up there, but it says it down here. We are 17 and a half months. So we run a Monte Carlo simulation of the project and estimate the likelihood of completing the project as a whole in month increments from 16, which would be very optimistic. Uh, that's the sum of all of the optimistic to 21, which is the sum of all of the pessimistic. And so the Monte Carlo estimates the completion time for successive runs. So we're gonna go through it. It's gonna do the random number generator apply it to the probability curve for each of the activities. You're gonna do that for all three, you're gonna add them up, and that will be the estimate for how long that simulation of the project takes. And then we're gonna do that thousands and thousands of times. And when we bring them all together, it will generate for us the probability distribution for the project. And so if we look at it this way, so we have our frequency and our duration, basically building up a histogram, and so we have successive runs and it figures out how long it's going to take and we just start building them up
And now with our histogram, we can figure out what our distribution is, which has its own probabilities associated with it. And finally, we can turn that into what is the chance of completion by 16 months, 17 months, 18 months, 19, 20, 21 months. And it's a very, very powerful tool. I've shown it here for a very simplistic uh, project, uh, but it is used you know, on very complex uh, projects uh, to, to great effect.